Maybe there's a third way. Maybe we take the Imam at his word when he says he's speaking to a progressive, moderate Islam and, and approach him, leaders from left to right on all sides of this issue, approach him and say, we support your right to do this. You are protected by our constitution to do this. We are simply saying that the impact you want to have, the objectives you say you are trying to meet will not be met by this. It is actually divisive what you are doing why don't you relocate to another part of the city? We will help you. We'll help you clear regulatory hurdles. Hurdles. We'll help you raise money for lost time. Just don't do it here. We are here now with the president of the board for CARE, the Council of American Islamic Relations yeah. in the New York chapter. Ziad Ramadan, thank you so much for being with us, Ziad. My pleasure. You heard Dan Sinor uh, talk about this, and I think a lot of people are saying, Great. Everybody mm -hmm. has a constitutional right. right. They're private citizens to build on private property. Just don't build it a block and a half from mm -hmm. where 3,000 Americans uh, died in a, a terrorist attack. Right. What would you uh, say? Well, you know, I, I actually heard the, uh, the owner of the property in an interview ask that very same question, and his, and his response was, uh, is there another building for sale five blocks away? And what I say is like, you know, he hasn't been offered, for example, hey, you know what, we want to give you a comparable property on Museum Mile. You want to build this beautiful cultural center, right? So we'll do something there. How's that? Those options are not at the table. It's very hard to find good real estate in New York City. And he found a great piece of property, and this is his dream building, so this that, is what that, he's going to do. That just happens to be a couple of blocks away, though, from 9-11. Let me ask you this. If Mayor Bloomberg right. and Donnie Deutsch and all other New York leaders uh -huh. came together and said... Well, we found this great place in Midtown right. uh, where he can build his dream building and he'll actually get more traffic through Midtown. Is that something that could possibly be on the table? You know, I'll, I'll tell you what, you put that option in front of them and they'll have to make a decision and I think that's something that they would probably consider. But wow. no options are there, and I'm not going to speak for the owner, but if no options I, are there, I have, a lot then of friends in, I have a lot of friends in real estate, mm -hmm. I have to tell you, many dear friends, I understand the market. That's just not true. What's well, not, what's not true? That there aren't true. options for other real estate opportunities in New York. There's no options for this particular okay. Okay, I situation. Ask, I, I like he his... owns this property. He doesn't own any other properties that are comparable. We can do these. So, but I wanna, so but I wanna, before, I really before we dive touch on... in, though, really quickly, I want to because we wanted you to come on the because there's been, there's been a debate. Talk right. about the proximity. I also want to talk though about the goal of preaching tolerance. Right. Right. Talk, talk so about those. Quickly about the, the proximity, you know, to insinuate that because this thing is a couple of blocks from ground zero is to basically say, well, there's some collective guilt that you guys should have here, that American Muslims, right, and Islam was to blame for this, and it isn't, and it wasn't. Just the same way that, you know, we don't say don't build churches next to Oklahoma City federal buildings, right? That's, not, that's nothing we'd ever say because it doesn't make any sense. And in our government, and in the way we structured our, 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 you know, our, our country, you know, we don't have collective guilt. Right. You know, this is a rule of law where everybody comes here, whether you wear you know, dreadlocks, wooden shoes, a kilt, or Donnie, a turban. is that fair? That's very fair. But have... I guess my only question, and, mm -hmm. and once again, I don't think there's even a debate, the right to do it, everything you're saying. Mm -hmm. I, I couldn't agree with more. Having said that, though, what do you say? Let's role play a little bit. Right. And I'm somebody that lost a father in the World Trade Center. Right. And like emotionally, me, friends, right. and emotionally, I say, I, it just something I just doesn't feel right. Is that, an ir is that an irrational response from someone, or can you have empathy for someone who feels Absolutely that way? Absolutely not. That's a very rational response. I think people have raw emotions, about, and they should always have raw emotions. I mean, people are still talking about Pearl Harbor. And December 7th, I mean, I know, as an immigrant, that Pearl Harbor is, is sensitive to me. I say, my country was attacked. I'm an American citizen. Right? We're very sensitive to all of those things. But we also have to say, we also have to be reminded that many Muslims lost their lives in those buildings as well. I know Muslims who went as first responders, including my wife, who was part of a Columbia University medical team who went down there. She built the triage, the makeshift triage centers and the pharmacies, was on fireboats, was on, you know, NYPD, I mean, uh, right. FDNY fireboats from Chelsea Pierce to bring supplies down to ground zero and was there for 9-11, 9-12, and 9-13. And when the USS Mercy came in, personnel from that ship thanked her for creating some order out of the chaos that was there. So we're very, very sensitive to these issues, but I think no one's talking about the fact that Muslims are also victims. Here, they don't, those attackers, those, the, perpetrators, the perpetrators of that attack in our nation do not 
represent American Muslims, and that could not be forgotten. And, and obviously Muslims were killed in the attack as well. Obviously. Really? Well, there's been a lot of talk about tolerance, but obviously mm -hmm. tolerance goes both ways. Obviously right. you have the legal right to do what, sure. what, what's being done there. No one disputes that. But what about tolerating the feelings of New Yorkers? I mean, it, does that play at all into, into the decision of, as Donnie said, of people who died on that day? Do you feel any obligation to those people and to the emotions they feel? Because even those people would say, of course, you can, you can do it there, right. but should you do it there? You know, that's, that's a very good question. I think that they're going, they're going to put together a very um, fine, intelligent, and diverse board of directors you know, an eclectic group that's going to take all of those things into consideration when they start programming, um, you know, the exhibition spaces and the lectures that are given there to talk about diversity, pluralism, and tolerance. You know, these are conversations that must be had. You know, these conversations and, and, and those conversations will be had inside the mosque. Absolutely. Which, so by the way, let center. me just say, so since 9/11, right. I have been saying, uh -huh. and a lot of other conservative commentators have been saying. When are Muslim leaders going to step up and start demanding tolerance in their own faith, in their own ranks? Because there was a fear after 9-11. Right. But you say that's what's going to be going on here. You know, that's really funny because um, someone said, a rabbi from a Washington, D.C. Uh, based interfaith company said recently, he says, you know, you ask for moderate voices to come forward and then you attack them. Right. And that's what they did to this uh, Imam Faisal. You know, New York City is a mainstream, pretty mainstream as far as this Islam goes, and nearly a million Muslims in New York. They're very yeah. mainstream. This guy's considered left of the mainstream. Right. I, mean, I consider myself moderate and mainstream. I consider him left of, of yeah. where I'm at. Really quickly, though, a lot of questions about where money financing is coming yeah. from to build this. Will that be made public? I think that's, uh, to me, that question is an absolute riot. Because if you're going to go through all of this process, right? And, and, and the thing that really kills me is that there, there are some, uh, there are some uh, uh, GOP candidates for the, gu in the gubernatorial race, right, who are hanging their hat and campaign on the fact that they want to know where this money's coming from. Have they conceded their campaigns already? Because the way I see it is this guy would have to be out of his mind to try to do anything stupid with the FBI watching him and the whole world so, watching so, him. So, 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 so the, right the money's going to get out. We're going to know. Of course, where, it's going to be Because right that's thing. what we always hear. I hit lose my friendship immediately. Where did the $100 million come from? It hasn't been you know, yeah. raised yet. You know, right now they're infrastructure building. They're going to create uh, okay. a corporation to run the show. Okay. Well, very good. Thank you for coming. My pleasure. This conversation is going to stay with us. We hope you come back. Great. Thanks. And we'll be right back. And as important as this story is, Willie's Week in Review. Yeah. Straight ahead.